The 8-Bit Pocket Plus by Columbus Circle is a handheld Famicom clone console with a 2.8-inch LCD screen that plays Famicom cartridges. It is not an emulator. This thing is an absolute must for anyone who has a collection of Famicom cartridges and is looking for a new way to enjoy them. It is affordable, it has really abundant retro taste, and is quite fun. And it's a crying shame that Nintendo never officially made anything like this. Being a clone console, it is based on a really good NES on a chip design, and there is no emulation, no lag, and no boot up time. It has amazing compatibility with basically all Famicom carts, including the carts that use special chips and expanded audio. The difference between the original 8-Bit Pocket and the revised 8-Bit Pocket Plus is expanded audio support that can play Castlevania 3 for Famicom, as well as Gradius 2 for Famicom, but more on that later. The company followed it up with the IPS 8-Bit Pocket HDMI. Basically, every single Famicom cartridge that I've tried worked on it. The clone cartridges worked, the multi-cartridges ones worked, however, my EverDrive did not work. But clone console compatibilities for the EverDrive has always been hit and miss. The original version was probably designed to look like a big Famicom controller with red and gold styling, and Nintendo probably disapproved of it. This version is stylized yellow, like some early Famicom cartridges, but it still feels like a very retro product. I bet Columbus Circle just didn't want to face the risk of Nintendo suing them. So the screen is an LCD, and it's designed to display the NES and Famicom pixel resolution perfectly. All the pixels are nice and crisp, and the graphics are easy to see without blurring and tearing. The viewing angles aren't the best compared to IPS screen, but it looks good in your hands at a regular distance. I think they really nailed the form factor. It feels a little clunky with rounded edges, but it feels like a large Famicom controller. It looks and feels like something from the mid-1980s, and that's perfect for delivering a dose of Nintendo-flavored retro dopamine. It actually feels quite ergonomical in my hands, and I never felt cramped using it. It can also fit in my jacket pocket without the cartridge. The D-pad is decent, and I would have preferred a circle in the middle of it. But it actually feels good. My only big complaint is that the volume doesn't go all the way off when you turn it all the way down and you have to actually put in a headphone if you want it to go completely silent. It's really weird. The power's on the bottom, the reset button on the front of the unit, pretty decent d-pad, Start and select, right in the right place. A front-facing speaker. B and A are decent. Turbo B, Turbo A. On the back, there's a space for the four AA batteries and a screw to keep it in place, and the 60-pin cartridge jack. The AV out on the top, and the power, which I never use because the included AC adapter is rated for Japan and not the US. The cartridges have a really satisfying clunk when you connect them. Technically, this is a portable console, and you can definitely play it on the go, but I find myself playing it in bed or curled up on the couch while watching a YouTube video on my TV. With the advent of handheld emulation systems that can run classic Nintendo games easily, there's something deliciously retro about doing it on a clone system. It just feels like a classical approach to it on hardware instead of software, and that seems appropriate for playing Famicom games from four decades ago. The inconvenience is authentic right down to having to keep your cartridges clean. The cartridge connector seems to be relatively stable, but if you jostle the cartridge too much, you can lose the connection, and that happened that hasn't happened to me without deliberately trying to do it. It runs on 4AA batteries, 
There's no built-in rechargeable batteries, but you can easily get some decent rechargeables for about 12 bucks or so. The battery life is excellent. I got several months of use out of it before needing to recharge them. It comes with an AC adapter that you shouldn't use because it is rated for Japan electrical standards and could potentially damage the console after extended use. The cartridge slot is big enough to fit American style NES cartridges. However, the connector board is 60 pin Famicom, so it is possible to put in it's possible to play an NES game with a 72 pin to 60 pin adapter, but it's unwieldy and the ergonomics is poor. It has okay video out on a CRT, but I've never really wanted to do this because if you have a CRT, you're probably into collecting Famicom games and you probably have a much better way to play them, like on a real system. There is a collection of garbage built-in games, but the less said about them, the better. There are no, There's no way to play a second controller or special controller games light gun or robot games and that's fine. The Famicom Disk System RAM adapter doesn't fit but that's okay because it's not necessarily portable. The 8-bit Pocket Plus launched on May 8, 2020 in Japan and was priced at 6,578 Japanese yen and I ordered mine from Amazon Japan and had no problem getting it shipped to the US. However, since I ordered mine, it looks like the white and yellow edition is no longer available on Amazon Japan, but the mostly white and a little yellow edition is still available. Also, if Amazon is listed as a seller, they will ship to the US, but third-party sellers will not ship to the US. The 8-bit Pocket Plus costs 5,754 yen, and that is roughly $43. However, shipping is 2,768 yen, or roughly $21. But that's pretty typical for air shipping from Japan to the US. Now, there's a company in China that's selling products on AliExpress called Retro Road, and they're selling a version of this console with blue and gray stylings. They also make a very attractive 72-pin model that can play American NES cartridges, and I ordered it. If I had a guess, since the console is manufactured in China, I suspect that Columbus Circle, which is a Japanese software publisher, is partnered with this Chinese company for, for manufacturing handheld clone Famicom systems for the Japanese market. I don't know of any official confirmation of that, but it is quite literally the exact same thing using the exact same molds and circuit board designs. I ordered the NES version from AliExpress and will do a review on it in the future, but it's currently making its slow trek around the world. So, in conclusion, if you are into Famicom Collection, you really should get a 8-bit Pocket Plus. This thing is so much fun. There are no save states, no cheats, but it is deliciously retro and an incredibly appropriate way to play and enjoy Famicom cartridges. I'm definitely looking forward to using this in the future and absolutely recommend one. I hope you enjoyed this video of this review of the Columbus Circle 8-Bit Pocket Plus. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If you would subscribe to this channel, it would really help me grow this channel. Thank you very much. Got a lot of cool videos coming down the pipe. Have a good one.